uh, situations very poorly. Um, you know, today, the last scrimmage was more about letting them play, running our base offense, our base defense. Uh, today was more about exposing them to different situations in game, whether it's a two-minute situation, an overtime period, uh, coming out with the ball in, in tight quarters, and uh, you know, mentally we're just not close to where we need to be. We, we look today like a very young football team that is just playing football and isn't applying the situation and you know, not knowing the down and distance, not knowing the situation in the game. And, you know, at the end of the day, most games come down to four or five critical plays in a situation. And today we did not manage that well at all. So we've got a lot of work to do. Uh, how disappointing is that? It's probably, you didn't expect it, but how disappointing is that? Well, you, you do expect it with a young team. But so far, the first uh, week and a half at camp, I've been excited because we haven't practiced like a young team. You know, we, we've practiced with urgency. We've had a great tempo. Um, you know, for the most part, the metal part of things we've picked up pretty well. And today we just did not handle situations well. So we got to go back and we've got to hit these things again and make sure we learn from them. What do you think with a young team, after you've been doing this for a little bit, maybe they've kind of hit a wall? And yeah, but that, that's not an excuse. We got to push through it. You know, that we're, what I told them that if we've, we've mentally hit a wall now, how are we ever going to go through a 12, 13, 14 game season? You know, that teams that aren't mentally tough enough to get through training camp aren't mentally tough enough to get through a season. And to me, there's, there's great correlation with it. And we've just got to keep pushing them through. And, and the leadership in our program has got to step up and, uh, and get us over this hump. And again, every team in the country hits a point in camp that the novelty of it's over and your, your game is far enough away. And, and this is where teams decide to become good and they push through this, and we've got to make that decision. Quarterback-wise, uh, what has Matt Schultz done to separate himself? Just his knowledge of the offense, his execution of it, his efficiency throwing the football. Uh, you know, he has taken care of the football better than any of the quarterbacks. You know, so not only does he, I think, give us right now the, you know, put us in the best situation to win, he is not putting us in situations to lose. And, and I think sometimes with a young quarterback, you don't necessarily need them to make great plays. You just need to get them to avoid to make big mistakes. And, uh, and so far, that's what he has done better than anybody else in the group. So would it be safe to say that if you guys had a game tomorrow to play, that he'd be the starting quarterback? You're very safe to say that. Right now, if we had a game tomorrow, Matt Shields would be our starter. And, and I, you know, with the way things are going, I, I would have a hard time seeing that not, but not stay true. I mean, it would really, you know, something drastic would have to happen for him to not be our starter. And again, I, you know, I don't believe in two, three weeks announcing a starter. To me, if you have a competitive program, guys got to show up every day and compete uh, at every position. And if you're not going to announce on the press box who your starting left tackle is, I don't believe you do it with the quarterback position. Obviously, that position's under scrutiny, and, and he has a clear and distant lead right now to be our starter. Sean Joplin, you know, he had a nice play today to get a touchdown. If you could talk about his development and his progress. He's getting better. He just still doesn't know the offense as well as the other guys. Um, that he's made a lot of growth from a year ago. He understands the offense better, but not well enough uh, that you're going to take Tyrone Prani or Kamar Jordan or, or Adrian Hodges off the field. Um, you know, right now he's a solid backup, and, and he may get some special teams reps, um, and he's developing fine. I think, you know, if he keeps his development, he'll be an impact player here, uh, but maybe not as a starter till next year. You know, he's in the mix, but, you know, right now, if everybody was healthy, he probably would not get a lot of plays at receiver. Having that idea of who's going to be the number one guy at quarterback, is that allowing the wide receivers and quarterbacks start to develop some more chemistry? No question. No question. And that's why you like to get settled with that as soon as you can. Um, Every quarterback's cadence is different. Um, they all throw the out a little bit different, although we coach it the same. Uh, you know, every receiver runs a speed out, maybe a half yard deeper, a half yard shallower. And the more that you can get your starting quarterback working with who your starting receivers are going to be, um, you know, every play that we run has a ton of different possibilities based on what the defensive reaction is, not only as a whole defense, but individual techniques. And you just can't give a young guy enough reps. And so we're just force feeding him as many reps as we can. And I think every day we get him 60, 70 reps, he gets 60, 70 plays better. Another battle, the backup running back battle. Do you see anything develop more of that from the scrimmage today? Uh, right now, uh, unfortunately, uh, Jordan Hopgood and um, 
Eric Geiger are not 100% healthy. I thought they both gutted through the scrimmage today. Uh, Jordan Hopgood had a little bit of a knee, and he played through it. And, and really, it's a competition between Hopgood and Geiger, and then Pettigrew would be behind the two of them. What was uh, what was how was Geiger banged up? Um, it, just he had he has an, a little ankle oh. sprain again. Again, not enough to keep him out, but uh, he certainly didn't go 100% today. You know, but you're not going to be 100% through the year. And you know, I give both those guys credit that they probably could have got to the training room and maybe talked their way out of the scrimmage. And to their credit, they both wanted to go and they went at less than 100%. And uh, they still were productive. After practice, the offense was running a little bit. So would you, did you declare the defense the winner of the scrimmage? No, we didn't or? declare the defense the winner. But the one thing with the offense is we don't want to beat ourselves. And uh, you know, we, we, we don't condition unless you know, we, we do things to beat ourselves, whether it's illegal procedures, illegal formations. Um, you know, if a guy gets the ball stripped because he's not securing it properly. So, uh, you know, we don't condition if, if they don't beat themselves. And if they do some things to beat themselves, like turnovers and unforced errors, then we give them a little friendly reminder at the end of practice. Thanks, Coach. Okay, thank you.